Hey guys, what is up? Red Panda Mining here. How you guys all doing? I hope you're all doing really well and having a really great day. In this video, as you guys can see, I have access to both my hands and this is something I've never done before. Really excited to do a full how to build a mining rig. And so for this video, I'm hoping that new miners stumble across this video and just see how I build a mining rig. And it's, it's pretty simple in terms of the parts that are needed. And I know that there's gonna be many different variations of parts out there, different motherboards, different power supplies, different variations of, you know, the GPUs that you could be using. But I'm going to try to explain that as I go along and build this mining rig step by step. And I will have timestamps down below for people that are wondering certain different things. Okay, so as we go along and build this whole rig, all right, it's going to be really fun. And I'm using a GoPro Hero 9. And for the OGs who've been subscribed to my channel for a while, you guys know that I, I use a different camera and I, I vlog usually with a mirrorless camera. But this time I'm using a GoPro Hero 9 so I want you guys to let me know what you think of this style kind of video I would really love to get your feedback all right so anyways guys let's begin how to build a mining rig so I have all the parts here let me quickly go over what I have and then we'll begin all right so I have first the AAA wave this is a six GPU mining frame and depending on what you want to use there's many many different mining frames out there there's a Veta frame there's a Kingwin there's Rosewill there's server cases but in this kind of example Example today I am just using a typical you know open air rig style frame and another way you can have mining frames is to make one yourself which I highly recommend as it's much cheaper right now during this time as these kind of mining frames can go on Amazon for like 300 or 400 dollars which is just way too much you can just go to Home Depot and buy aluminum angle and wood for like 20 bucks or something so I'll have a video down below link to Guntus Vitolins he's from mineshop.eu and he also has a YouTube channel on how to build a mining frame all right so I'll have that link down below but I already have this frame built just because there's so many different mining frames out there and AAA wave they do not sell this anymore so okay so this is my mining frame next up we have the graphic cards and I have six RTX 3070s here and these are the Gainward edition 3070s okay and so the TDP on these are about 225 watts and each of these 3070s will require a single 8 pin for power all right and so when we're mining which I'm gonna be showing you guys how to mine with this and you know set it up and we're gonna be using Hive OS I will be showing you guys how to put Hive OS on an SSD it's gonna be really easy but yeah I'm hoping that these will use between 115 to 125 watts for each card that we are gonna hopefully mine on Ethereum okay going along guys next up we have is the motherboard all right I have an ASRock H110 Pro BTC plus coupled with a G4400 processor Hopefully you guys can see that on the camera. And then I have eight gigs of DDR4 RAM and as well as the SATA cable for the hard drive for the SSD and the CPU stock fan for the G4400. Okay, going along, we have the power supply, all right? This is the most important thing for all mining rigs to be exact. All right, I have the Parallel Miner ZSX board. This is the Game Changer board as uh, they call it the Game Changer because the biggest thing is that they have the ATX and CPU cable, all right? So this basically turns a server power supply like this, this is an HP server PSU, 1200 watt, into an ATX power supply, all right? So you don't need to spend hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on an ATX power supply right now. You can just buy this setup on Parallel Miner. I'll have a link down below to this so you guys can see what I'm talking about. And so coupled with the ATX and the 8-pin is the PCIe cables. I have 12 PCIe cables here that we're gonna utilize six of them for each of the RTX 3070s, and then we're gonna use another six of them for the GPRisers.com risers, which I'll show you guys in a sec, okay? So, and so each of these cables are 16 gauge thick, which is plenty enough thickness to have about 150, if not 225 watts to go through a single cable, okay? So that's how I'm gonna have uh, the power set up. Should be pretty simple. I'll show you guys uh, how I'm gonna plug it all in into the ZX export. Okay, and then finally, I have the risers. These are the GPRisers.com uh, risers, guys. I'll link down below. And you can use offer code Red Panda Mining for 10% off if you guys are interested in buying these really, really nice high end gold plated USB risers, okay? Really, really nice quality control, high quality on these, uh, on these risers, okay? So awesome stuff. So thank you, GPRisers.com. Okay, guys, let's go ahead and build the mining rig. I'm going to start off with the motherboard 
and putting in the RAM and the CPU, okay? So let's begin with the CPU, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this clip off like this, all right? Just push it down and you have to bring it sideways, lift it up, okay? Now, with this Intel G4400, and I guess this goes along with other CPUs, uh, there's gonna be like a little notch here, all right, and the notch on the other side, and we're gonna match it up with the notch that's over here and here, okay? So just simply plop it in like that. I like to give it a little wiggle, just so it's, it's nice and firm in there, okay? Simply now, we're gonna close the lid like so. Make sure this part slides in, go like that. And this should pop off automatically, okay? This is just a CPU lid cover, uh, just to protect the pins that were underneath here so you don't get anything to bend the pins or anything. So there you go, the CPU is in. Now, next step we need to do is uh, put on some thermal paste, okay? So I have some Arctic Silver here. Normally the Intel stock CPUs, which is all you need for mining, to be honest, you don't need high-end, you know, custom CPU coolers as uh, the CPU is not really used for mining. I mean, you can do CPU mining, but I just I just like sticking with the Celerons and then just keeping the rig as a GPU mining rig. I took this from another rig, so that's why I don't have CPU thermal paste on it initially. Okay, so we're just gonna have to put on some here. I just do like a little rice pea right there. All right, that's enough, don't need too much. And uh, now we're gonna plop on the CPU cooler like so, which is really easy. Just put it right on top like that. Okay, have to line it up to the, uh, the four holes. And really simple, with these CPU coolers, I just like to lift it up a little bit, and I like to push these in one by one, all right? So I hold the CPU cooler like this, push in the first one, and then I like to push the opposite side. All right, that one's in. Now I like to do this side here. Okay, and then I like to do this side right here. All right, you'll hear click, because it's literally locking itself into the other side of the motherboard, all right? So you see how it locks in right there, all right? So that is in, that's not coming out. And then we need to put in the CPU power, okay? Like so, into the CPU header. The motherboard should say CPU header, uh, depending what kind of motherboard you're using. And so there's gonna be different motherboards out there. You guys are probably wondering like, do I have to use this motherboard? No, you can use any motherboard out there that has, you know, six PCIe slots, or you can just get an older motherboard and you can find one of those four to one PCIe adapters and turn the motherboard into a six GPU motherboard. And also generally you have to make sure the motherboard has 4G decoding, which I will show you guys on the monitor when we build this rig, okay? 4G decoding and PCIe Gen 1 are the most common settings that you need to enable on your motherboard. Okay, next step is to put in the RAM, which is gonna be pretty simple. Gonna unlock this little clip here on this side and we're just gonna simply line it up. Uh, looks like on this RAM, this RAM's a little bit longer on this side. You just have to make sure you're not flipping it this way because that's not gonna fit. You have to do it on this way. Okay, so there we go, we're just gonna push it in like so, all right, it's gonna lock in. Okay, so that's it, there you go. The CPU RAM is all good. Now, we want to put this whole setup into the mining frame here, okay? And uh, what we're gonna do is just to line it up with the holes and then we need to put in the six screws to place the motherboard onto the mining frame here, okay? So let me just do that. Putting in all the screws, okay. Got all the screws in. Next step I wanna do is to put in the power supply because once we put in the GPUs, I wanna make sure that this can boot just by itself into HiveOS. Okay, so once I put in the power supply, then we need to uh, put HiveOS on the SSD, all right? So I'll show you guys that in a second here. So we're gonna put in this 1200 watt HP server power supply from Parallel Miner. All right, look at this thing. This is pretty nice. And also I have these little just little rubber inserts on the bottom because I'm putting this on metal. And so there's no really good inserts for this HP server power supply to put it in, to lock it in because uh, I'm not using an ATX PSU. This is a custom, you know, HP server PSU. And normally the ATX power supplies would go over here on this AAA wave mining frame. And depending on your frame, you know, you'll all have different setups, but I'm just gonna put it here just like this, you guys can see. And uh, the GPUs, the back of the GPUs are gonna be over here. So the PCIe cables are gonna come up from the bottom there. 
and plug in to the back of the GPU. So that should be good in terms of length of those. You have to be mindful of that because if you have your power supply maybe over here, then you have to you know put the cables all along there in the back and they might not be long enough okay so you have to be mindful of the length of your cables okay next up guys i am going to put in the atx and the 8 pin for the cpu okay so you guys can see how this works for okay. the uh, game changer board so this is the end right here that is going to plug into the game changer board like so okay just push that in make sure it clips in all right you'll see it flush all the way in there we go, I heard a click and that is in. a little bit hard to get in, but that's okay. Okay, next step is I'm gonna put in the eight pin CPU and that's gonna go into the eight pin on the motherboard here, like so. Make, make sure you follow the clips, okay? It's gonna go according to the clip on this side of the motherboard and there you go, that one is in. Okay, now we're gonna put in the ATX power into the motherboard and it's gonna go like so, like this. And again, that'll clip in. Make sure it's in flush on both sides. There you go. Verify it's flush on the HP server PSU. Okay. All right. So there you go. We can do some cable management later, but uh, otherwise it's just going to sit like this for now. And yeah. Okay. And then there's a power here that was already on this game changer board for, I guess, the SATA for the hard drive. Okay. So this is going to go for the SSD. So there you go, the power supply is in. We will plug in the GPUs after we turn this on and we need to get HiveOS onto the SSD uh, right now along with uh, the SATA cable. Okay, so we'll do that in a second here. We're gonna bring that over here. And we're now, we're gonna go to my laptop. Okay, so while my laptop's booting up, I do have a USB to SATA adapter. This is just so I can burn the HiveOS image onto the SSD here. Okay, I'll have this link down below. You guys can buy this on Amazon. It's pretty cheap and it's really handy. You can use this on any computer and any mining OS you use, you can just use this. It's pretty It's pretty simple. Okay, so we're gonna go to HiveOS and just download the, uh, the zip file, the HiveOS image. We're just gonna do the GPU one. All right, so I already have that downloaded and then we're gonna go and download Balina Etcher. This is the software that you need to burn HiveOS onto the SSD, okay? So I have that installed already. So now I'm gonna plug in the SSD, uh, the USB thing here into my computer. Okay, just like so, you just have it sit like that. Next, you're gonna open up Belina Etcher, like so. And now we're gonna flash from file. You need to go to your downloads folder and you will see you just download the HiveOS image. Now we need to select the target and we're gonna select the SSD that you just put in. Uh, I have a 240 gig SSD here and we're gonna hit select. And now you're gonna hit flash. And you're gonna say, yes, I'm sure. And it says, warning, you are about to erase an unusually large drive. And you're just gonna hit, yes, I'm sure. Just make sure you don't have anything uh, personal or anything that you need to keep, <laughs> okay? And then we're gonna hit yes on that and it's gonna start flashing. And so this is probably gonna take a couple minutes. So I'll be right back. Okay, flash is complete. Now we need to make a HiveOS account. If you don't have one already, very easy to register. I'll have a link down below. Okay, so we need to make a new worker. We're gonna go to my Red Panda Mining test farm here. So I have no workers. We're gonna go to the top here, click on plus. We're gonna hit add a worker. Now we're gonna give it a name and we're just gonna say test rig. Okay, you guys can give it any name you want. Password can be anything that you guys want. I just hit this little refresh button. It'll make the password for you. Uh, you can put some tags if you want. You can put a description if you want, but uh, just leave it blank. And then we're gonna hit add. Okay, now we're gonna get the rig config and stuff here. So we're gonna download the rig config and there is a button to do that. But first we need to see if we can actually see the SSD, all right? So sometimes if you don't see it here, then you will need to unplug it from the adapter here like so. Give it a few seconds for Windows and then we're gonna plug it back in and see if it shows up. And yes, it does. All right, so we're gonna go into Hive and now we're gonna save the rig config into that part there. So we're gonna hit download there. We're gonna navigate to Hive. Okay, and you're just gonna hit save right in the open there. Okay, so that's all we need to do. Now we need to eject the SSD and how we're gonna do that is uh, make sure you have it closed, all right? And now you need to go to the bottom of the screen here. You need to go click on this little add remove hardware. Okay. And we're going to eject the SSD. Okay. Just to safely, you know, safely remove it. 
and now you're okay to remove this. Okay, so that's it. Hive OS is on here. That is perfect. Now, guys, we need to plug in the uh, SATA cable that goes into the motherboard. All right, so depending what kind of motherboard you have, they'll all look like this, this little one right here. So, so it only fits in one way, and it's kind of awkward in where I have the power supply, but that is okay. There we go. Okay. We're going to plug the SSD like so. It only fits one way. And now we're also going to plug in the SATA cable. That's from the power supply that I showed you guys earlier. And so this SATA cable goes in like so. Very simple. All right, so there you go. We can mount it to the mining frame and mining rigs. They can be glamorous, but uh, in my demonstration here, I won't need to put it in. I, I usually leave them just hanging like that. Okay, next step, guys. I want to turn this all on, make sure we can see it in HiveOS before we put in any GPUs, okay? It's just best practice to make sure this is the main heart of the mining rig. You wanna make sure this all works before you put in the GPUs, the risers, uh, PCIe cabling, okay? Just to, just to null out any issues that we're having initially and just to make sure that all of this works. Okay, so I'm gonna plug in the USB keyboard and as well as a USB mouse and we're gonna go into, uh, just turn it on, just turn this whole thing on. And we're also gonna plug in the DVI cable that goes into my monitor over there just so I can show you guys uh, the BIOS settings, okay? We're also gonna go into the BIOS as well uh, just to make sure that works, okay? So yeah, you will need a monitor and keyboard and mouse just to set up the initial setup of your mining rig. And then you won't need the USB keyboard and mouse and the monitor after, all right? After it's all set up, you can just have just the power cable and as well as the ethernet cable, which uh, we'll plug in right now as well. Ethernet cable will be over here. There we go, plug this guy in. Okay, so ethernet is in. And we're also gonna plug in the power because we need to turn on this whole thing, okay? So let's do that right now. Okay. All right. Okay, just make sure. All right, looks like the Game Changer board light came on. Okay, so I think we are good to go. Turn this whole thing on. Let's just see if it goes on right now. Here we go. The power button for the Game Changer board is right here. So three, two, one. Okay, so the HP server power supply came on and I just realized this is a motherboard I've used for mining before. So it does have the AC power on uh, already on in the BIOS, but uh, I'll explain to you guys in the BIOS settings here right now. So, okay, well, it looks like it went to HiveOS already and we will verify on the laptop just to make sure it showed up. Okay, so let's see here. All right, I'm just going to, let's do an F5. And nope, looks like it's still starting up. I just realized I didn't have the other side of the ethernet cable plugged into my network switch. Okay. All right, so now it should be connected. All right, just a little bit of uh, issues here while doing this for you guys, that's okay. The reality of building a mining rig, not everything is perfect, okay? So I'm hoping, uh, I mean, I'm not hoping, but I, I hope that we don't run into any issues putting in the GPUs. But if we do, I will I will document it and uh, we'll, we'll obviously show uh, how we can troubleshoot things here, okay? So the beauties of building a mining rig, that is for sure. Okay, so it's still not showing up. Okay, hold on, we're just gonna I just turned it off. We're going to turn it back on again and just give it a reset because I think the network connectivity, it just didn't register in Hive OS in the, in the first place. So now it's just booting back up into Hive and we shall see if it shows up here. Okay. All right. There we go. Yep. It shows up. Perfect. And uh, there's the SSD. There's the G4400 and there's the ASRock uh, motherboard. Okay. So it looks like it works, it shows up just fine, and we're also gonna update to the latest version at the same time. And just to get it all up to spec here, hit upgrade. Okay, so I was gonna do that. I now want to show you guys the BIOS. So after this resets, we are gonna go into the BIOS, okay? So it should be pretty quick. All right, so it's just rebooting now and we're going to go into the bios we're going to hit the delete key or f2 one of those two keys depending on the motherboard and there we go okay we're in the bios now i would like to see if this has 4g decoding so we're going to go to the chipset configuration 
I believe, and it shows here the above 4G assignment. So I already have it enabled, but for some motherboards out there, it's gonna be disabled. So you wanna make sure that's enabled. And as well as the PCIe link speed, I like to use PCIe Gen 1, but if your mining rig doesn't work, then you need to try out Gen 2 or auto. I know that Simple Mining OS likes auto as well, So, but I think Gen 1, in my experience, has worked pretty much all the time. So I do that for all of the eight slots, but we're only gonna be utilizing six slots anyway. Okay, other settings here, I yeah, we don't have to worry about. You can disable the onboard HD audio and uh, restore on AC power loss. Okay, so that's the thing I just explained earlier about the rig turning on when I turned on the power supply. So you can have that on if you want or off. It just depends if you are hoping that, you know, when you're using Hive OS or even if you're using Windows, it, it's going to come back on. But in Windows, you need to, you know, double click on the miner or you can have an auto start or something. But in Hive OS, everything is automatic. It'll start mining when the power comes back on. So I usually have that on. OK, and then other stuff here. I think that's yeah. Those are the three settings I usually play with and then you know disable some other stuff but everything else looks good so we're just gonna save and exit okay so we're good to go it looks like it's going back in the hive os now we're gonna shut her down and we're gonna add in one graphic card and make sure that works first and mining just to verify it's all working well and good with this whole setup again it's just best practice to you know try it with one by one before you just plug them all in because uh, you don't know if you're gonna have some issues all right but we verified that we can see it in hive os and uh, all that good stuff. Okay, so we're just gonna turn it off here. Okay, so that's off now. All right, guys, now I want to uh, unplug the power cable. Just, again, another best practice before you add in any GPU, riser, PCIe cable, all that stuff. Okay, so before I put in the GPU, I just want to explain just the power supply, okay? So the power supply, it's basically the heart of the mining rig. And it's really gonna depend on what your power usage is gonna be, the TDP of the graphic cards, and uh, you just need to make sure you have capacity. Now, there are some instances where you don't need to have the, you know, the correct capacity, but depends on if you are a veteran miner or a newbie miner. So for new people watching this right now, if you are seeing that I am using a 1200 watt power supply with six RTX 3070s, and so if the TDP of these 3070s, each of them, it says online about 225 watts, six times 225 is more than 1200 watts, okay, on this HP server power supply. But when you undervolt the cards and mining, it's gonna be, you know, around 120 to 125 watts for each of these. So that is theoretically under 1200 watts. So for me, I've been mining for a few years now and I trust Hive OS to put the clocks in, to undervolt the cards, to have the overclocks and everything all in just perfect and to be mining at about 100 to 125 watts each card, okay? But if you're using Windows, for example, and you know, you're using MSI Afterburner and you put in your clocks and sometimes when you're mining in Windows, the clocks and undervolts decide to give out and go back to stock. So then you're literally mining full bore, 225 watts each, which is, way too much for your HP server power supply, right? So for some people that are not comfortable with running a power supply that's lower capacity than what all of your GPUs will handle, then I would recommend getting a higher wattage power supply. Okay, so there are 1500 watt HP server PSUs, there are 1600 watt power supplies, 2000 watt Bitcoin mining power supplies, then you will have enough capacity, all right, to run these cards. And so you don't have to worry about the PSU going at full bore, all right? So that's just something to be mindful about for all of you new miners out there. Make sure you have the power capacity to run these at stock, because if you don't and you're running the power supply at maximum, if not more, then it's, it's gonna burn, right? It's gonna burn out. So I highly recommend doing that, but if you are a comfortable miner, such as myself, I am utilizing a power supply that is a little bit lower in capacity, but I know that in terms of the overclocks and undervolts that I can handle it and it'll be safe in Hive OS. I trust Hive OS to do that, but not mining advice, not financial advice. Just guys, be careful on what you use. I would highly recommend always to use power supplies that have higher capacity for depending on what hardware you're using, okay? So be mindful of that. I say that many times because Oh, everyone's always asking that question. And yeah, I've always been saying that. Okay, anyways guys, let's go ahead and put in the GPU. The first one, we're gonna put this 3070 uh, gain word in. We need the riser. So what we're gonna do now first is just put in the GPRisers.com riser onto the graphic card. I like to use my whole hand and just, just push it in like this. Okay, just so you 
don't do one side at a time and break it. All right, so and then we're just gonna push in a little bit. Now there's a little clip here on the GP risers dot com riser we're just gonna push that in and it'll clip in just perfect okay so that is good now we're gonna place the gpu we're gonna go on to the first slot on the mining rig here so i'm gonna need uh, to get my screwdriver we're just going to uh before we put the gpu in we need to take the screw out and uh, I, I had these in before so <laughs> normally you won't have screws into the holes so okay so now we're gonna put the gpu in like so Make sure you line it up to the screw hole. Very simple. Yeah, screw it in like so, okay? You guys can see. That's how I'm gonna have the first GPU and uh, the other five GPUs are gonna go into these other five screw holes right here, okay? So it's gonna be a full on six GPU mining rig just like my other mining rigs on the floor here. Okay, all right guys, now we need to um, plug in the uh, USB and PCIe 1 adapter and then we're gonna do the PCIe cables all right so let's do this so we're gonna plug in the PCIe 1 adapter uh, into the motherboard first actually so uh, since I plugged it on this side since I'm using this BTC motherboard I'm just gonna be using the black PCIe 1 all right so we're gonna put that in on the first slot here and make sure you don't do it backwards you'll see this big notch here is bigger on this side than the other side all right, I've seen some rig pictures of people burning their rigs because they put it in backwards like this. Don't do that. Make sure you put it in on this way, okay? You have to be very careful putting the risers in uh, because yeah, just you don't wanna burn your rig. Okay, now we're gonna put in the USB cable like that into the PCIe 1 adapter. And now we're gonna plug in the other USB side into the back of the riser over here, okay? Like so, okay? There we go. And you could put in the cable first. I, I don't know, I, I guess I did it backwards, but you can do it either way, <laughs> you know, once you put in the GPU. So that USB cable's in, this is in. Now we need to put in the PCIe cables for the power. Okay, so this is gonna go into the game changer board. So we're gonna need two, all right? Like I said, I have 12 of these and we're gonna be utilizing one for the GPU, which uh, the GPU only has one eight pin anyway. And the other one is gonna go into the back of the riser. Okay, so these PCIe cables, there are two different ends, right? One end has a six pin and the other end here is an eight pin with a daisy chained uh, little two pin here for eight pins. So we're gonna put the six pin side into the ZSX board. Okay, like so. All right, and then this eight pin side is gonna go into the graphic card, okay? So we're just gonna make sure that this is all lined up just fine. And we're going to go to the graphic card here and plug it into the top of the GPU and plug it into the 8 pin like so. Okay, make sure it's in all the way. Push it in, make sure you feel both sides, make sure there's nothing loose. And that's uh, always important to double check the PCIe connection into the graphic card you do not want to make sure it's not loose or a little bit out otherwise uh, you might short it and burn your gpu okay you don't want that okay so now we're going to put the other cable into the riser so like i said the other end has an eight pin here so we're not going to be using that because the riser only utilizes a six pin so that's going to be fine we're going to plug the six pin into the zsx board okay that clicked in nicely now we're going to plug in this end uh, into the GPU risers. Make sure it clips in. All right, so that clipped in. Verify, touching both sides, making sure the six pin is in, just flush. Okay, so that's in. All right, that's good. Okay, guys, so there we go. The first GPU is in. All right, and now we need to turn it on. Make sure it works and make sure HiveOS can see the single GPU. Okay, so we're gonna plug in now the power cable. Okay. Now we're going to turn on the whole rig. Power button here. Here we go. Three, two, one. Yeah, riser shows both lights. That's a good sign. All right, it's turning on. It's going to Hive OS. Now let's verify if Hive OS can see this single RTX 3070, guys. Can't wait to put in these other five. Going to be really exciting. Okay, so it's still booting up in HiveOS. Okay, so we're just gonna do a refresh here. 
And there you go, shows up, GeForce RTX 3070. All right, guys, so that's perfect. Uh, just verifying we are on the latest driver. It looks like HiveOS, the latest image has the 460.67, so we don't need to update the driver. We are good there. Okay, guys, let's get this mining. Now, very simple. Uh, we need to make sure we add a wallet, okay? So I already added a, just a wallet I found online. All right, we're gonna be testing uh, mining to Ethereum. So really easy to add a wallet. Just go at the top here and uh, add a wallet address, okay? Uh, so do that and it'll show up here. Next thing you need to do is go to a flight sheet. You need to make a flight sheet. So I, have, I don't have one here, so we're gonna make one. We're gonna mine Ethereum as that is the most profitable thing as of this moment. Next, we need to select the wallet, which is the one you just made, okay? Now the mining pool. So there are many different mining pools out there that you can mine to, Ethermine, uh, Hivon, or uh, Binance, or two miners. You know, there's so many different mining pools out there. I can recommend mining to, you know, Ethermine. And uh, that's the most popular one that I, I think a lot of miners like to use. It's very easy. If you go to miningpoolstats.stream and you click on Ethereum, you can see all the different mining pools and you can see their fees and stuff. So just look through that list and see which one you like. But ultimately, uh, just for this test, we're just gonna choose Ethermine and uh, let's just find it here. Ethermine's right here. Okay, next, we're gonna find the server. I'm on the west side, we're gonna click west. Okay, and then click apply. Next, we're gonna go to miner. And with NVIDIA RTX 30 series cards, I really like T-Rex miner as of recently. Okay, so we're gonna use T-Rex miner. We don't need to set up anything else, just leave it like that. And then we need to click on create the flight sheet. Okay, so very easy. Now it looks like it made the flight sheet at the bottom here. Okay, so we're gonna go back to workers. All right, we're gonna go back to the test rig. Okay, so you can see here, no miner set, no miner set. So now before we set the miner, we're gonna do overclocking. So before we uh, start doing the flight, we're gonna change the overclocks. Okay, so go to edit. And with this 3070, as of recently, HiveOS just implemented something called Absolute Core Clock. So I believe 1100 for this 3070 is the golden spot. Memory clock, we're just gonna do, I think 2400 is what I like. Fan, we're just gonna do 70 fan. Power limit, so I like to do at least one, let's just do 125 for these. That's, that's what I know on these 3070s. And uh, yeah, and that's it. Now we're just gonna hit apply or save at the bottom here. Let me close this. Okay, so you guys can see the overclock settings here. Now, we need to apply the flight sheet and we're gonna go back here and now we're gonna hit this flight sign, okay? Hit that and it's going to apply the uh, flight sheet. You will get an error, it says, why aren't you mining on Hivon and, and you won't get a fee and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, you can mine the Hivon if you want. I haven't done a test on that to see if it's more profitable or not, but anyways. Okay, so it is now I believe it's, uh, yeah, it's applying the flight sheet and looks like it did it. And now we're gonna see if it starts mining. Now it's just uh, mining, all right? And we're gonna see uh, some hash right here. I'm just gonna go back to the uh, laptop just to make sure. Let's do an F5 here. And okay, and yeah, it looks like it says 117 watts. And let's just see if we can get at least 60 mega hash on this thing, okay? And I don't have a power meter because we're using 240 volts. I mean, I do have a power meter. I guess once I turn this off, we will take note of how much power we're using initially. And then when we turn the rig on, then we'll see how much more we're using in terms of watts. So right now we're at like 3,800 watts, but that's for all of my mining rigs right now. Okay, so you guys can see we are now mining uh, 61. 5, 9 mega hash. Okay, it looks like power consumption says 116. So that is pretty good. That's exactly what I'm looking for on these uh, Gainword 3070s. I think that looks pretty good. You want to verify on the uh, web GUI as well. So yeah, it shows we're at 61.59 and that is the, uh, the clocks we're using. Okay guys, so that is good. That's how we can get mining now on that first GPU. Okay. Now, I want to put in all the rest of them. So, very simple, we're going to put in all the cards and exactly how I put in the cables for the first GPU, we're going to do that exactly for the rest of them, all right? So let me quickly do that. We're going to shut her down just by going into HiveOS here. We're going to go up to the power button. Okay, power actions, then we're going to shut down. Okay, and hit confirm. 
And normally I would like to stop the miner before you turn it off because uh, when it's mining, you know, it's mining full bore right now and, and you do want it to cool down before you fully shut it down. Okay, so make sure you do that just so if you plan on doing any maintenance or anything. Okay, now we're gonna turn off the HP server PSU. All right, so the whole rig's off. We're gonna unplug the power cable just to be safe. Okay, there we go. All right guys, now, very simple. We're gonna do the exact same process like I did with the first one, okay? So I'm just gonna quickly do that and then I'll show you guys the aftermath, all right? Here we go, three, two, one. Okay, you guys can see. I have the rest of the GPUs all in, the rest of the 3070s and the cables. Okay, so let me show you underneath first. So here I have the five USB that I plugged in, the PCIe, uh, sorry, six of them. They're all in here now into the ASRock motherboard like so. All right, you guys can see it's a little bit dark. It looks like I'll need to do a little bit of cable management. So you know what? Let's just do that a little bit right now. Crypto mining isn't glamorous, but uh, any way you can try to have some kind of cable management so you don't have loose wires potentially hitting some fans and uh, speaking of fans i don't actually don't have any fans for this mining rig but uh, let me explain a little bit here so normally the fans would go i would say in the back or in the front of the gpus uh, depending how you look at it okay so here's just a little bit of cable management and make sure you have these all plugged in correctly and uh, always triple triple check all right make sure they're all in okay so anyways yeah the fans i don't have fans but if you do i would put them in the front here and exhausting out this way so the fans would be blowing out this way so that the heat would be coming out all right not blowing air in okay this is where the hot air would be coming out of the gpus anyway some people do have fans uh, in the back as well as well as the front okay so you can do that as well but uh, depending on where your ambient temperature is and also your pcie cabling Okay, so here is the back just to explain how I did all the power cabling. They're all plugged into the ZSX board, all right? All of the uh, six pin PCIe into there. And just like I did on the first GPU, there's one going to each of the GPUs and one into the risers on the bottom, okay? So that's how I have them. And again, triple check all of your connections. That is the most important thing when you are building a mining rig because if you have one that's loose or something, that could bring down your whole rig or burn the GPU, all right? So just triple check all your connections. That is the most important thing. Oh, and another thing I forgot to mention is make sure you check all the wires, all the cablings, make sure there's nothing loose from the manufacturer or anything because again, if that happens, then you're gonna potentially surge or short or burn your, your components okay that's something that you do not want to happen okay guys so there you go that's all in and some of you guys are probably looking at the cabling like like red panda this is a mess and yeah sure it's a, it's a mess but you can do some cable management if you want to okay it's not like you know you have to but you know for some people that are ocd i am ocd a little bit but not that much so i am going to just do a little bit of a cable tie here just to have all the pcie cables uniform Okay, so there you go, and I could probably put another one, and there we go. Okay, just to keep it a little bit cable managed, you don't have to, but it's always nice to have a cable managed mining rig like this. Okay guys, moment of truth. So just verifying that's all plugged in. Okay, let's get the power cable, and we're gonna plug this thing in, uh, just to see how much hash rate we can get in this thing. Okay. So power cable is plugged in, guys. Let's go ahead. Lights on. Let's plug, turn it on. Three, two, one. Okay. That looks nice. The GPUs look like they're all on. All the fans are on. Verify all the GPU risers. Risers are on. Okay, yeah, they're all notified on. Lights are on. It looks like it's booting into Hive OS. Okay, we're just gonna see if it shows up in the web GUI. Let's hit F5, refresh. Yes, there we go. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, 3070s. And it looks like the overclocks are already in under volts. That's good, all right? So when you do it on the first one, it should apply to the rest of them, uh, depending if you have the same cards or not. If you have different cards, then you will need to make sure that you go back to overclocking and uh, change the uh, overclocks there, depending on which cards you have, okay? So it looks like it's already mining. And let's just verify over here. Yes. Yeah, it's going 369. 
<laughs> Great number, 369 mega hash. Oh man, that is that is beautiful. Okay, here we go. So each of the GPUs, each of these Gainward 3070s, we're getting 61.5859 mega hash. And uh, the temperature there, you guys can see it's about 43, 41 degrees Celsius, 117 watts. Okay, so it looks like it's not utilizing 125 because we're using this new Hive OS feature, the absolute core clock. Okay, so that is the thing I, I showed you guys in the overclocking, uh, which is pretty cool. So yeah, the absolute core clock, that's something new. Normally I would go like minus 200 core, but now it looks like it does this new thing called absolute core clock. So yeah, that's really cool. And uh, I'll have a screenshot of the different GPUs, the different core clocks that you guys need, depending on which uh, 30 series cards you have, or, or even 20 series, apparently they, they made it work for. Okay guys, well, there we go. It's working just perfect so far. I mean, yeah, it shows up in the web GUI and yeah, it looks like we are okay, it looks good. Okay guys. I think that's it. That's how I build my mining rigs and this is how you can build a mining rig. Okay, so we didn't run into any troubles, but there could be some people that run into some issues where, you know, your overclocks don't stay or the rig freezes. And if it freezes or anything like that, check your overclocks. Maybe you overclocked it too much and, uh, or maybe it's undervolted too much or maybe your cables aren't in all the way okay check all your PCIe cabling check your risers make sure they're all in make sure all the cables are in those are the probably the most common things regarding building a mining rig and the issues that people have is just you know some things aren't in all the way all right check the risers you could have a bad riser unfortunately you'll then have to change the riser there are so many different things you can troubleshoot if it's not mining correctly. Some people may have asked, uh, I forgot to sh talk about it earlier, is the power button. Okay, so how to turn on the motherboard if you don't have it AC power on before. So what I like to use is just a screwdriver and then you can short the two power pins on the motherboard to turn it on, okay? Or you can have a power button, uh, which I don't have one here as an example, but uh, some mining rig frames do come with a power button to plug in into the motherboard header for the power button and you can turn on mining rigs that way. There are a whole bunch online. I'll, I'll probably post one in the description below that you guys can see. But yeah, again, all the parts that I have here will be in the description below just so you guys can see what I used and all that good stuff. But looks like it's, it's going just fine. Looks like the temperature is rising. I do feel a bit of heat coming now off of this rig. So I bet potentially in the future, I will probably have to add some 120 mil fans in the front. And to power those fans, this ZSX board does have some fan headers. Actually, they're all four pin fan headers. So you can plug in the fans there and this game changer board will power on the fans as well. All in one, I love this thing. This is, man, this is actually really awesome to have all of the GPUs, the motherboard, everything on one power supply. So I, I definitely Definitely highly recommend this HP server PSU with the game changer board from Parallel Miner. Guys, link down below. Really, really slick power supply. Okay guys, so there you go. Let me know your thoughts and let me know what you guys think of my GoPro situation of how I'm, I'm able to use both hands and uh, to build a mining rig. If that is something cool and you guys want me to do a lot more in my videos, please let me know. I feel quite weird <laughs> to be able to access both my hands and have the camera like this. It is a little bit more flimsy. It's not really on my chest perfectly, but it's it, it'll do for now. But let me know guys what you think and let me know what you think about this rig. If you guys have any questions or concerns, please post it in the comments down below. I will do my best to answer and the community will also help out as well. Okay, my friends, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good one and peace out. Uh, I forgot to show you guys the power consumption. Let's stop the worker. Okay, now we're going to shut her down. Shut down, confirm. Okay, we have to turn off this rig as well. Turn off. Okay, that's off. Okay, let's go to the Space Goats power meter. And let's just see. So we are at about 37... Let's say 3,700 watts, okay? All right, let's turn this thing back on and see how much power we're using when it's mining. Okay, so the rig is mining now and it's taking about 4,485, 89, 85 watts. 
So I did the calculation on my phone and this whole rig should be utilizing only about 773 watts, okay, from uh, 3,712 off the, uh, all my mining rigs. So there you guys go. This is, oh man, that is sick. Oh, that is so, so power efficient for 369 mega hash. Great number. Okay, guys. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good one and peace out.